<laughs> so anyway, Matthew Savoy picked nine. Um, the Sabres again picked at 16, did not move up or down, and they took out uh, Noah Oslin. Oslin, mm-hmm. I said that right, two for yep. two, baby. You yeah. nailed it. 18 year old kid, uh, but he's small, man, 5'10, 164. Yeah. He's from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Um, let's look. I, I, I looked up some stats. He had 42 points in 32 games, uh, or 39 games with uh. Your gardens. You see how I do it. I'm on fire with pronouncing these correct tonight. <laughs> uh, the junior 20 team last season, uh, 10 points in six games at the uh, under 18 worlds. He was named uh, one of the players in the tournament. Sweden won the gold medal. Bob McKenzie. I looked it up. Bob McKenzie had him 22 and Scott Wheeler, who we just talked about had him 23. He did say in his uh, post media scrum that he has, he thinks he only needs one year in Sweden before he comes to uh, North America. Those are his words after uh, being drafted. Uh, I'll turn over to you again. What are your thoughts on that pick? Going with another speedy, uh, skilled skilled set, smallish forward. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, getting a Swedish kid's always fun because you know, listen, they've got a they got a lot of Swedish connections on the team, so that's mm-hmm. that's nice. Um, obviously, you're going to take your time with him. He's you know he's light. You know, you know, you're not you're not going to play at that size that's of small. the NHL level. Like that's yeah, that's, you're, that's just not happening. Um, but you know, but you can, but again, you can just take your time with them. You know, you don't have mm-hmm. to rush them. Let them get a nice, real full year uh, playing for Jira Gardens and see what happens there. Now, if something happens where it's like a Rosine situation where he gets buried and he's not playing a lot, then you just be like, all right, man, just get over here, play here. You know, we'll. We'll get you developed here. We'll take care of business. But um, they've had the Sabres have had a little bit better luck in the past with with guys coming through Jure Gardens. So I don't think they're sweating that too much at this point. But um, but yeah, he's he's another guy where if you looked at his name through mock drafts, shows up anywhere. Like you could see him. Some people were thinking maybe him at eight to Detroit. Some people were thinking like, well, maybe he slips down past twenty. Like it's this is what we said about the draft. Once you got past about five or six, well, we actually said once you get past three, things are getting, things get crazy, but obviously this year was a little different, but um, the way it actually played out anyways, but he, um, I don't know. It, it, it's leaning again on skill and ability um, with this guy. Uh, you know, you're, you're aiming at upside. Like you're not putting all your eggs in the basket on, you know, potential and upside. There's obvious skill there. There's obvious ability. Uh, you know, against his peers, he scored pretty well. You feel pretty good about that. And like, that's, that's a real nice pick. I think that's, it's a real nice pick. It makes a lot of sense. And again, you know, they've had very good fortune with Swedes. They've done very well picking guys out of Sweden. Um, and that, you know, you can't always just judge it by how other guys do, but, sure. um, but his profile is very strong. Uh, I, I like the pick I, I you know, and you know, people getting hung up on just picking centers because you know all three of their picks were, were centers. But you know, Adams pointed out very quickly, it's like it's easier to have a guy go from center to wing, center than, to wing. than the other way. So yeah, yeah. Um, having that, ver- you know, the versatility to be able to do that, you know, is good. Like uh, you want you want guys this age to be versatile. Like that's it's a necessary thing, especially at forward. Like defense, it's a little different, but. Uh, but forwards, like, listen, if you can find the place where they can have the most success and, and put them there, that's good. I, obviously, they figured out to, how to do it with Tage Thompson and, you know, with a handful of other guys. But uh, but yeah, I like this pick. It's 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 a it's a solid pick. But uh, I think they're in my mind, I think you're hoping that he he can spend maybe two really good years in Sweden before bringing him to Rochester. Um, you, you don't want to have to have feel like you have to do what you did with with Rosine. Where he's he didn't play any time, hardly any right. time with with his with his team, and then you're just kind of like, we can't waste another year with him over there. We got to get the, we got to get this under control. Right. Let me read from uh, Scott Wheeler from the Athletic. I'm gonna read the whole thing, but a couple of highlights. His evaluation. He had him again ranked twenty uh, third. He says Oslin's calling card is his airy, agile skating stride, excellent hands, cleverness. And two-way ability, the skating and defensive aptitude, including on face-offs, make him an able penalty killer, which is pretty cool. And the rest give him clear cool, clear tools of creation at five-on-five five and the power play. Um, he also points out at the very end of the evaluation, too, that he's got two years left on his contract with your gardens, but the second year, 
as an out built in if they aren't promoted back to the SHL from hockey, whatever the hell that is. Hockey all Svenskin. It's the it's the it's the second league. There's yeah. a promotion and relegation in, in most of the European leagues, and his, uh Jurgarden got knocked down, so they had a rough season. He also he also says some scouts worry about whether he'll be able to get to the inside and hold his own physically along the wall against pros and his mm-hmm. score a ton even against his peers this year, given his talent level and line mates. But his approach in skating should help mitigate against that. I like him a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, that's another, you know, pretty good. Uh, you can never yeah. have too many forwards, you know, on this team. Good pick. You like the pick. Yeah. Seems like uh, evaluators like the pick. Um, and the, I'll say this though. Like he, Scott mentions that his strengths are with his skating and his ability to handle the puck. Those are two things that are very difficult to teach as time goes on like if he if he's already a very top level skater with his ability that's that's a huge that's a huge hill that some guys have to try to to climb as you know they go through juniors or college or whatever um if he's already at like a, a at a really good level there it's one less thing you got to worry about as they as they evolve as a player and you know if they can handle the puck and weave in and out of traffic i mean Listen, puck possession is the name of the game now. If you got a guy that can that can dart in and out and be able to keep keep possession of the puck, again, it's it's an ability that you want guys to have, especially a center. That you want guys to have that ability right off the hop. Uh, I, like you know, again, the size is is an issue, and a guy that's you know he's again he's not going to be that big if when he hits the NHL. Like that's just it's not going to happen. But right. Um, but if he stays on like that more slight side of things, you know, when it, when he, when he gets to the, when he gets the AHL, if he gets to the NHL, if he stays on that more slight side of things, it you know, it gets tougher. I mean, and it, listen, NHL is the toughest league in the world. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to say that. Like, everybody knows that. Um, but everybody hits harder. Everybody's faster. Everybody's, everybody's better at everything in the NHL. So, um, but if he's able to, to use his uh, agility and ability to, to get around, to not get hit, Suddenly, that size doesn't look like such a big deal, especially if you're the skating's good and you got good speed. You know, I mean, all it takes is one hit to kind of you know put you in your place. But um, but again, like he's he's not going to stay 155, 165 pounds <laughs> forever. Like that's just right. that's just not the case. So uh, t- again, when the strengths are in those areas and he's got the really good skill, especially two way, like you know, like to have a guy that you don't have to worry about being terrible at his own end. Um, but when you've got those other skills, but you've got those abilities already at an advanced level, then you that's that you feel pretty confident about leaning into a guy like that. 